team is just Whimsicott and Duran. They, right. they just pair up really nicely and you can just go after things that way. Um, you know, while you can attack a lot of things with super effective damage, you do have to ask, is there any way you can consider the Jellicent and get around it? Obviously, we saw in uh, Aaron's top four set the reveal of the Kasib Berry on mm -hmm. Jellicent, reducing the super effectiveness of a, or the damage done by a super effective ghost type move. And that may help him a lot. There is always that option. Chandelier, a sky high special attack stat, could just start launching Shadow Balls at it. You know, followed up with some damage yeah. somewhere else, that would deal with it. But the Kasib Berry may completely change that calculation. I think a lot of the berries have been very difficult to deal with. I mean, we've also seen maybe some of the other Pokemon carrying a couple of those super effective berries, and it really does mess with the damage calculation that gets done there because things are, get to survive. Yeah, I think one of the most popular, you know, type resist berries is going to be that Babiri berry. I don't think we can really underestimate that. Uh, so many Pokemon don't want to deal with Max Steel Spike, and, and they throw up a Babiri berry and, and see where they can go from there. Uh, we are going to see the leads taking the field very, very shortly. Uh, Durant Togekiss uh, this time from Bingy, and then Charizard and Togekiss from Aaron. Very consistent lead coming out from Aaron. Hasn't really swayed away from this particular two Pokemon lead very much, except being forced into that position of having to bring out a Duraludon. But in this situation, now you've got your Charizard on the field, and both Togekisses are out. They expect to see some pretty offensive pressure coming out from both players early on. Yep, let's see where the switches are. Duran not, not having any of it right now. <laughs> Leaving the field, doesn't want to face down that Charizard at all. Maybe they're going to catch a flash fire here on the switch in. Uh, one of those key reasons to be using Chandler. Uh, the Dynamax is going to take place on Aaron's side of the field, though. This Chandler could be a real nice switch in. It really could be, but we have to figure out what exactly this Charizard is going to do here. Gigantamaxed now onto the field, looking pretty scary, if you ask me. I definitely wouldn't want to be staring that down if it were on the battlefield. But Charizard going to be going for a very, I think, uh, going to be going for an offensive move here as the Togekiss on Aaron's side does use the follow me. But Charizard actually going for a max airstream, reading the switch. Chandelure not going to take that too well. No, not a fan of that at all. And a speed boost heading onto Aaron's side of the field. I think he was expecting the G-Max Wildfire uh, to come down and then he'd be able to activate Flash Fire. But Aaron respecting that play very, very wisely, admitting that, hey, I think you're going to be able to switch in your toge uh, your Chandler, and you know I've got to be careful of that. So a real smart play by Aaron to to carve out that early lead there. And especially because using Max Airstream is going to boost the speed of both Pokemon on Aaron's side of the field. It's going to make them fairly fast in this matchup. But now it's time for Follow Me, but this time from Bingy's side, where the Togekiss is going to become that center of attention. And now it's time for that G-Max Wildfire. It's going to take that one on the chin, but it's really looking at that extra damage at the end that's most important. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of offensive pressure coming from Aaron's side. He's not got a knockout yet, but he's about to get one as well. That said, Chandler's pumping room. down the trick room, and that's going to be an interesting turn of events. Of course, we are going to get some residual damage from G-Max Wildfire. Uh, there's a tiny amount coming down and, like, such a sliver of health. That said, though, Bing G might be able to start attacking first. Yeah, it is important to note that G-Max Wildfire won't work. The residual damage won't work on a Fire-type Pokemon, which is why Chandelure is still up and kicking, gets a chance to get the Trick Room off, and the Trick Room is going to be very important now for Bing G's side. Yeah, and we'll see how, if he can capitalize on it. I mean, he definitely has options. He's, we know Durant's in there, and actually Durant would move before Charizard in a Trick Room because of the Max Airstream. The boost that Max Airstream mm -hmm. has provided does mean that this Trick Room is much more valuable now, just slightly changing those speed tiers around, and now Durant might be a safer bring. Dazzling Gleam first from Bingy's Togekiss, just doing a bit of chip damage here. Does get a critical hit. A, oh, double critical double hit. Double critical. <sighs> That's just got to feel so good, but oh. the Heat Wave miss isn't. Heat Wave going to miss the Charizard, but does get the knockout onto the Togekiss on Aaron's side. Yeah, Bingy picking up his, his first knockout of the game. Uh, you know, pretty pretty smart there. And, and Max Overgrowth, the follow-up here. Uh, just, I mean, confirmation, of course, it does have the Solar Beam, can turn that around, but maybe trying to get some recovery uh, coming on there between turns. Uh, that's, I mean, there's no real need to, to try and do that. You could have airstreamed again. Obviously, doesn't want to get too much uh, of a punishment in the trick room. Uh, but hey, Togekiss is going to fall to the G-Max Wildfire right now. And Bing G is going to be down to his last two Pokemon. He does have a trick room in play, though. Does have a trick room in that Durant is still very healthy in the back because of the switch out earlier. So Durant going to be able to take advantage of that trick room. 
I think it was intelligent for Aaron not to go for the Max Airstream there. Yeah, I mean, I think the Max Airstream just would have would have caused some more problems. Uh, that said, I mean, we're now in a Conkel door mirror, uh, so both players are accommodating for Trick Room, and this Durant's going to be kind of up against it a little bit. Uh, the Charizard's Dynamax has, or Gigantamax, has ended, uh, so he's a lot more manageable now. I'm interested to see how these Conkelder are trained. Not too much information you can glean from watching both of these players play with the Conkelder on stream. So I think this is going to be a, f a fairly tough matchup for both of these players, but it's a Duraludon in the back as the fourth and final Pokemon for Aaron. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. So Durant is, of course, going to Dynamax. It needs to Dynamax to start landing hits through the Hustle ability. And honestly, this is a big turn for Bingji to see if he's made the right call. He knows that he has the upper hand on the Charizard in the Trick Room right now. So Aaron almost forced to switch it out there so it doesn't get caught by a Max Rockfall. But if he's called it on the way in and lands a Max Quake on something like this Duraludon, it could be in for a, a wild one. Thunder Punch was heading into that slot though, so he may be predicting it to still be a Charizard right there. Uh, Conkelda will fire back with a Drain Punch from Aaron's side. Good damage coming down there, bringing it to just over half. And a Steel Spike following it up, so uh, boosting the defense is going to be pretty important here. Absolutely. Oh, and that does so much. That was a one-hit knockout. Yeah, I mean, that's the power of Hustle, right? Ooh. Yep, the, the defense is going up there are going to help uh, against the Concorde, which, which you've just knocked out. Uh, so that's kind of a bit of an issue. G-Max Wildfire, though, still burning bright for Bingji's side. But you do have the grassy terrain, which is going to give a little bit of HP back. Yeah, I mean, Grassy Train's helping out a, a little bit there. Uh, obviously, we do see the Flame Orb activate on Bingji's side. We knew about that from a previous round. Uh, and it's curious to know exactly when this Trick Room is going to end. If it ended at the end of this turn, you know, you could just Max Guard Jajura and go from mm -hmm. there. Uh, but you're not afforded that option right now. There's two more turns remaining, and actually two more turns of Duran in its Dynamax form. Charizard coming back in, looking a little more underwhelming, and probably a little more manageable with the Thunder Punch. Knowing that there's a Thunder Punch on the field is, is going to have to be something that Aaron plays around, for sure. Well, a Guts boosted Thunder Punch as well. Yes. So there's <laughs> definitely no way it's going to be able to take that. I mean, both the Pokemon over on Aaron's side of the field are weak to something this Conkelda's carrying. I think a targeting kind of... There's a question on where he targets, and if he gets it right, Bingji will take the game. If he gets it wrong, it's very much on the targeting, and this turn is going to be essential. Next couple of turns going to be very critical for both of these players to reposition themselves in this game, but right now it feels as though Bingji is just a little bit ahead at the moment. Yeah, well, Conkel Conkel going for protect. Yeah, Conkel the protecting. I think fishing out a protect on the other side is, is pretty wise. Duraldodon is protecting this turn. Uh, doesn't want to be, be caught short by any nonsense at all. Charizard does oh, get the blast, blast burn, burn right there, though. Uh, I don't think that Conkelda uh, should have been protecting right there. I don't think that was the play uh, overall. And it's now just Conkelda versus the world. Oh, and it's still taking the G-Max wildfire damage as well. Um, and, oh my goodness, this is uh, definitely a good spot for Aaron to be in right now. Yeah, I mean, realistically, you can't let the Charizard attack uh, in that instance. That said, you know, he's kind of up against it, right? So he knows that Charizard can't attack this turn. So he's kind of given that option to just launch Drain Punches into this Duraludon. But the problem is, is as soon as he can attack is when Trick remains. And then he's just going to punish the, the Conkelda with ease. Duraludon is going to heal up a, a whole lot of damage with Drain Punch, but there's going to be a lot of residual damage between turns. Mm -hmm. Basically, Aaron is, is asked to just knock out this Charizard. We do get a little bit of recovery, so it's not as bad as you may think, uh, but I still think Charizard's going to be able to pick up a knockout now Trick Room's ended. I, I mean, it has access to flying-type moves. There's, there's mm -hmm. no way. Well, it's not over until it's over. We have... Maybe one, maybe two turns left, yep. but it is Conkelder versus the Charizard at the final end of things. I would give Conkelder a chance if it was carrying the Assault Vest. It is, it is not. We have seen Flame Orb. We have seen Guts go off. And so I think Aaron playing this so wisely. I think Bingji just missing the opportunity to throw a Thunder Punch at this Charizard, causing so many problems. Charizard going for a Protect. Yep. Reads that well. Thunder Punch not going to do anything through that Protect. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no reason... Uh, not Play to protect safe. there. Oh, you get more residual damage as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you make the knockout uh, even easier uh, to try and work through. Now the grassy terrain has disappeared as well. Battle conditions are back to normal on the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, Conkelt is bulky, right? 
It's real bulky. So it, it should, we'll see if the air slash is able to get it. Not going to miss. Uh, Does no. get the knockouts. Yeah, easy clean up there for Aaron Trailer. Taking game one over Bingji. I think a couple of errors from Bingji later in that game just allowed Aaron to get right back in it. Blast burn. Blast burn from Charizard just took out the Durant. Yeah, I mean, you can't let it blast burn your Durant. You, you, you should not be letting it do that. And that is... I think one of the biggest issues, you know, you had Thunder Punch available, uh, you just protected the Conk Elder for, for no real reason. And, and Aaron Trailer takes the lead off that. He played it perfectly. He made the right switch when he took out his Charizard because of the airstreams and brought it back in. And, you know, I think he played that set to perfection. I don't think we need to see too much uh, ad adjustment in terms of what Pokemon get brought, but more so on just the level of play from both of these players. Just there's so much respect between the two of them, and you can feel that watching this set. Yeah, I mean, I think both players uh, were very considerate of, of what their opponent might do. You know, think about that Max Airstream turn number one. Yes, the Wildfire would have been the obvious choice there. But he respected the Chandelure, you know, adaptation. Chandelure setting up the trick room was interesting, but I don't really think he got to capitalize on it that much. I don't think so either. A lot, I, I am not sure if setting up the trick room there was quite the right play. There's just, I think, a few moments where Bingy was hoping for other things to happen, and Aaron didn't let that happen. Yeah, I mean, Aaron played that set flawlessly. I mean, that game went, went everything was, was going very well for him. I, I still struggle to, to see where the chandelier is coming, but, you know, if you can get a flash fire boost, you could be in a great position. That said, I think I prefer Milotic uh, to just try and deal with that Charizard. Milotic would be a great option. Yeah, the, I mean, there's options for Bingji. He's not locked into that four. Uh, I liked the Conkelder selection as well. It had many, Absolutely. had options. It, with the Thunder Punch, it literally has options against everything bar the Whimsicott over on Aaron's side of the field. So I think you have to bring that. Um, but outside of that, you know, he, he just didn't go for it. Once he had the Guts boost, he needed to start knocking things out. We'll see if the leads are any different for this game too. As a reminder, Aaron is going to be up 1-0 for this set. Definitely on match point here, but no changes, no surprises here for the leads coming out from Aaron's field, and no surprises either from Bingji. It's going to be the Togekiss and Charizard versus the Togekiss and Durant. Yeah, I mean, there's something uh, kind of interesting here. Um, the Charizard could get off a really easy advantage with the max airstream. So even if it gets redirected by something like Follow Me from Togekiss, as long as it max airstreams safely this turn, which it can definitely do next to a Follow Me Togekiss of its own, then there's no real way, I think, for this Durant to, to keep up, uh, you know, unless you can maybe weave in some kind of boost on your own. Uh, that's certainly a tough ask, and, and that's something I think uh, Bingji is going to have to be very aware of. Uh, both Pokemon are just Dynamaxing right away. There, there's really no reason not to. You know, this time, Bingji's going to leave the Durant in just to see what it can get done. And it is going to be that turn one Dynamax for the Durant and the Gigantamax coming out from Charizard. It's going to be important to see what these Togekiss do because of the follow me, the redirection ability, and just the ability to help and support. Yep. Aaron's Togekiss going for the follow me. So yep. we'll be directing that attention from that Durant away from the Charizard. And same yep. going for Vingy's Togekiss. So follow me's on both sides. We'll see if these Togekiss can survive. Max Rockfall from the Durant. I don't know if it's going to... It will. It's, it's yeah. enough to take out Togekiss. Yeah, it's not going to make it through that one. You have to be smart about it because when you play the Durant, obviously the, the go-to option in your mind is to max Steel Spike, but the max Steel Spike is often taken and isn't a one-hit knockout because of the Babiri Berry. So it's smarter, I think, to always rock for the Togekiss in that situation. That said, there is going to be a problem now because the max Airstream has gone up uh, and Charizard is now quicker than Durant. Charizard's going to be able to get out a lot of big damage without the, uh, yeah, with without with just the speed that's on the board. Um. I mean, to be fair to, to um, Bing G's side of things, he does still have his follow me available with yes. the Togekiss. So he maybe has one more turn to try and deal with this Charizard with this Durant. And it's going to be a key one if he can do it. Looking at the next couple of turns, we have Jellicent now out on the field for Aaron. And that Jellicent, putting out a little bit of pressure, might be able to do a couple things here, but now we see a helping hand come out from Big G's Togekiss, getting ready to help, but G-Max Wildfire is going first. Yeah. We'll be firing into the Durance. It's not gonna take it. No, does get the knockout. Yeah, I mean, it, you had. I think you had to follow me there. There was no other way. Maybe, I mean, the only thought pattern I can think of is Bingji is saying, hey, 
I'm gonna follow. I'm. I've shown follow me. I'm gonna let that happen. And then you know what? Um, he was thinking Aaron was just gonna target down the toga kiss anyway. Mm -hmm. And then, just because it was gonna get follow me, trying to sneak in the helping hand and, and eat the the max wildfire there. Uh, but honestly, Bingji's really up against it now. I think with with the way that Aaron's board is set up. I think that's what I mean, though, is that Bingji always looks like they're hoping for something else to happen, but Aaron's not allowing that to come through. And to take Duran's place, we now have a Conkelder on the board for I mean, Bingji. Yeah, it's Conkelder in Trick Room, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, but, you know, it's still facing down two Pokemon that could do really good amounts of damage. There's a whole lot of Trick Room coming out. Uh, Charizard, yeah, it's going to be moving last. But there's honestly not much threat outside of this Conkelda's Thunder Punch. Uh, the Follow Me there may try and help out as much as possible, but there's spread moves available in the form of Water Spout. Thunder Punch first into the Charizard. Yeah, not enough. No, in the Gigantamax form, definitely going to have too much HP. Max Airstream going to be enough to knock out the Togekiss, and that's going to be a one Pokemon advantage now for Aaron. Yep, I mean, he's, he's taking the knockouts. Obviously, the Follow Me saved the Conkelda uh, this time around. Uh, but you'll notice that Gelatin uh, still uh, just hasn't had the time to move yet because it's Trick Rooming. Uh, it, it moves last. And so now, you know, he gets to play things exactly how he wants. His Charizard has Max Airstream twice. It's definitely the quickest thing on the board. And realistically, I don't see much over on um, Bingji's side that can, can slow it down right now. We have to see what this fourth and final Pokemon for Bingji is, because we don't know what yet. It could be the Melotic in the back, but we're about to find out. It's actually ah. going to be a Chandelure. I, I'm not sure that this, this game's got too much legs in it left for Bingji. Uh, you need something like the Milotic. Of course, the Dynamax has ended. Uh, that does help, uh, but we've seen how much Air Slash can do. Um, you know, you keep the Conkelda down, and I don't think is going to be able to provide enough. As long as Jellison can get off an attack on it, should be in a pretty good position. Uh, that said, you know, Jellicent's slower than Chandler. Chandler could launch a Shadow Ball that way first, um, but I, I do think it's going to be tough, especially for this uh, Conkelder to stick around long enough to Thunder Punch the Charizard again. It's still taking max wildfire damage, mm -hmm. and that's a sixth of your HP every single turn, and a blast burn now from the Charizard as well to be able to target down that Conkelder, and it is going to get the knockout. Yep. Just Chandler left. Yeah, didn't even mess around with the, the air slash there. Just trying to do exactly what it could. Shadow Ball heading towards the Charizard. It uh, does mean it'll get knocked out. Uh, it's now down to 2v1. But when the one is Chandler and you're about to be hit by a water, water spout, spout, this could be getting locked up real quick. There it is. Oh. Chandler buying one more turn. Uh, it's going to be the focus sash. It doesn't matter. There is a sandstorm in play, meaning that Aaron Trailer is going to be the first regional champion in the sword and shield format.